So welcome to this weekly charting analysis with myself, Jasper Lawler. Already got it off to an interesting start with the uh, UK's biggest technology company getting bought out. Arm Holdings being bought by SoftBank. Before we get into all that good stuff though, we do have the risk warning on the screen. Please just peruse that. Any questions at any point, certainly feel free to send them through the chat window or the, the Q&A window. And here she blows, here is the CMC Markets platform. So it's uh, certainly interesting times. Front and center, I think for a lot of the CMC traders is that we've broken out to, to new record highs in, in US markets and uh, question number one is uh, can this be sustained? Well the old crystal ball is a little bit fuzzy but um, you know it looks good so far. What you want to see front and foremost is, uh, is when the first day breaks high you want to see it close above it did. Now the, the week closed above those previous record highs and so we've got a, a confirmed week closing above the previous records. Now that's that's good stuff in terms of confirming a breakout. We did come off the highs last week. Um, you know, I think the the thing that could potentially derail this, which is, um, yeah, let me just bring up the uh, the chart while we're on the screen. I did make a, a chart farm update on the S and P 500, not the not the US 30 today. It was the S and P 500 that broke out first. The Dow caught up a couple of days later, if you remember last week. Uh, but we had this downsloping trend line, broke through that first, and then um, and then the following week broke above those previous records. You can see we're getting a nice little gap open from last week's close today. Not quite at new intraday highs yet, but um, I would suspect those probably aren't too far away. But I was going to say that the one thing that maybe could derail this um, is that the economic data from the US is actually starting to pick up. Retail sales was, was strong on, on Friday, industrial production was strong, consumers confidence took a little bit of a pullback but to be honest that is a pretty spurious indicator anyway. Um, and so US economic data improving that obviously increases the odds of a, of a US rate hike. Uh, but nonetheless I think the moves we're seeing are pretty encouraging. A, a lot of it I think just comes from you know people fattened down the hatches a bit ahead of the Brexit vote uh, but then suddenly there was much cash to deploy in markets when, um, you know, once, uh, you know, once global markets didn't collapse following uh, the Brexit vote, then uh, then people started chasing the returns, and and, and that's what we're seeing. Um, same old excuses that uh, there's really low bond yields out there, so you don't get too much in terms of interest, uh, income interest. So people buying in are obviously buying into bond markets. Uh, but they're not really necessarily buying in for those low yields, they're buying in for the capital appreciation in bonds and uh, that's the same reason they're buying into into stock markets and it's it's no surprise that it's all the stocks with the highest dividends that are outperforming because people are just trying to get those returns from somewhere. All that being said, that's that's quite good news um, for this, this rally continuing. We're obviously in US earnings season now and uh, we've had some uh, generally positive results. Um, it's the big banks that are in focus at the moment. Um, so we've got Bank of America reporting in the next hour or so, and then we've got um, some of the some of the tech stocks reporting this week as well. So to check out, I've got some brief summaries that I've posted on the insights. Um, here we go. No, no it's about the video that uh, I'm not posting. There we go, advertising something I haven't posted. I will post it into Insights. Is the um, some some um, uh, analysis we've done? Just a quick summary on, on some of the big tech earnings coming out this week with a bit of chart analysis. The likes of Amazon, Netflix, uh, Microsoft, and Yahoo all reporting this week. So that'll be that. They all potentially could be drivers of returns. Or obviously, on the flip side, could see these marks roll over. We we'll have a quick look at the US 30. Looking pretty similar, this is obviously the daily chart. You can see that we've got that um, confirmed breakout on Wednesday, uh, Thursday, 
pullback on the Friday and slightly, and now actually with the Dow, we're, we're doing a bit better even than the S&P 500, pushing up intraday, pre-market, into to new records. I mean, there's been divergence here for a while on the RSI, um, but uh, we're, we're gradually pushing up into into overbought territory again, and that that's that's actually a positive thing when you're when you're in an uptrend. You, you know, you want to see strong momentum. Uh, you know, it's only when it starts reaching the end of the, the, a strong uptrend that then you start paying a bit more attention to the divergence, like like we saw here, with these peaks and price getting followed with lower peaks in the momentum, but we haven't really had that uptrend in price yet, so we're still going to get there a bit later in uh, in momentum when we get to those overbought sides, and it's, it's, a, it's at a later stage that momentum starts telling us that the market's overbought, so encouraging actually that we're not overbought yet, we're just heading into that territory, having broken through the, uh, the 60 level quite decisively on the US 30, and look at this daily chart. Um, not sure it'll be something that many people are actively trading. Maybe you are. Um, maybe you've decided to on the, on the sort of rare opportunity to. But um, it was the Turkish lira, which was the the big mover on on Friday, obviously because of the the coup. So just worth having a quick look at our dollar try chart. So what's basically happened is that we uh, we pushed massively on Friday, did a bit on Sunday, but now we're coming off those those peaks in in, in uh, USD TRY. But um, you know we're we're pushing into the top of the range, but we're not, not we're not there yet in terms of um, the, you know, the previous peaks in TRY about 307, and um, you know again the US data has been quite positive, maybe increasing political risks in, in Turkey. Uh, there's some scope that this pair could uh, could push a bit higher, but otherwise the big currency focus since but since Brexit obviously has been sterling. So just having a quick look at the sterling chart here. Worth noting uh, the other reason I bring this chart up. Oh, let me get rid of this boy in Japan. So I was just demonstrating those to someone else, but I don't typically use them. Um, the other thing, to, the other reason to bring up the sterling chart is we've got a lot of uh, UK-related data this week. So we've got uh, UK retail sales, UK CPI, and UK unemployment all coming out this week. Obviously, something I mentioned, in, and this is something I did put in Insights, um, is in a video preview of, um, or a video review, I suppose, more of the, the Bank of England last week and, and the pound post-Brexit, is that actually the reason that Bank of England held, held pat last week, and but are still signalling they might cut interest rates or do something else uh, to stimulate the economy in August, is because they don't actually have any solid economic data yet. At the end of this week, they will. Not all of it is um, pertaining to the economy after the vote, uh, but it gives us a little better idea as to how strong the picture was running into the vote and a little bit afterwards. So at that point, you know, if this data still looks reasonable, it's really it's hard. You know, they may still do something, but it, it's hard to imagine that, that there's a real need, uh, a desperate need to to raise interest rates. It's it's really it's going to be a choice for them of um, you know stepping in ahead of any future problems before there's any evidence of it, which is maybe a little bit um, imprudent, or um, or actually just waiting and seeing, keeping the powder dry. Um, I would certainly prefer the latter approach, but um, given the language of the governor and um, chief economist Andy Haldane last week, you know they seem to be gunning for, um, as one of them described, um, hitting a hitting a nut with a sledgehammer to solve the problem. Um, and so we had a slight counter to that uh, this morning with Martin Wheel, who, in not too distant past, voted for a rate hike. Um, he's been suggesting he's a bit more willing to, to wait out for some good data, um, you know, to, to hold off or the data worsens, then yeah, then think about cutting rates. Well, so at the moment, the question is, have we seen a bottom in, the, in sterling since, um, you know, since the, the Brexit vote? What we were looking at is um, something that's not quite divergent, uh, but basically where the lows in RSI were almost equal, but then we saw quite sharp low, lower lows. So we saw a bit of a momentum divergence here, and that's helped us push up to 135. 
you can see there's something akin to a tweezer top. It's not a tweezer top because there's not really a trend in place here. Um, but uh, if that were at the top of the trend, that would be the pattern. And it shows quite a big sell off a couple of times short of 135. And my, my reading from that, given that it comes in with those sort of little post Brexit bounce that we initially got, I would suspect that we need a bit of a bit of a bigger dip down towards, I would say, 130, the big kind of round number, to really kind of test the metal of the bears and see if they're willing to, to take the um, you know, to take the pound lower through those those Brexit lows. Um, if they're not, then that gives you a bit more scope for a for a decent rebound. Um, and I think if we can't take out the lows, um, we've got a few areas of resistance that I've highlighted on the chart here. Uh, this midline is basically the kind of long-term support that we crash through, uh, as is the 135. But you can see that these um, this low from February and then this immediate low before we did the, the big Brexit crash um, are two areas of resistance. And I think we probably head towards pretty much towards 140. You know, that if we can't decisively take out 130, ten, it tends to be the way markets react is that okay. We're going to move to the next big handle, so that'd be 140. So, can we sustain 130? If we move through there, then I think we're probably heading to new lower lows. Um, but it will probably all be dependent on um, first of the economic data that we get this week, and then and then subsequently. Uh, and then also how bank, the Bank of England react to that in, in speeches and how they actually react in the policy meeting, which is only in three weeks' time. So just, while we're you know while we're having a look at sterling, I won't go through all those fundamentals again, but we're seeing a similar thing in uh, the euro pound where um, 83 is holding quite well, and we've got that similar looking uh, kind of uh, tweezer bottom suggesting that maybe we've got a chance for another push up towards um, 85 and beyond towards the highs before we um, before we roll over again. Now I'm chopping and changing a bit here just according to the kind of main news that's going on. Um, maybe even worth a quick look at um, the shares of Arm Holdings. So obviously the shares were in a, a fairly tight little range. You know, Arm Holdings was originally massively funded by Apple and they get a lot of their business from Apple. Obviously they're a uh, chip designer for, for smartphones for the most part. And uh, with Apple shares uh, taking a bit of a dip, Arm shares have performed relatively well. They've still been holding this, this rising trend line, but they're mostly flat. So obviously this deal value takes them, you know, takes the share price way out of um, you know, this, this, this kind of recent historical performance. <coughs> no real chance to buy them now, though, unfortunately. It looks like this deal is pretty much sealed. I'm not sure if there's going to be any um, any competition. Intel was always the, um, the company that people thought would buy out ARM um, just because Intel fell behind in producing these chipsets, but it um, looks like they, they may have missed their advantage. Um, looks like uh, uh, SoftBank have, have taken advantage of the drop in the sterling um, to, to get in on a deal. We saw the same thing last week with Steinoff taking out a, a pound, pound land. So, you know, if you do invest in shares, you know, have a little think about um, some of the kind of companies that uh, that could be could be taken over that uh, look attractive with the kind of discount the pound is now offering. Um, some of the other Technology companies, obviously Sage is the only FTSE 100 company, but Imagination Technologies is another one because they're kind of a rival of, of, uh, of ARM. I'll switch over since we're talking about the UK market, I'll talk about the um, FTSE 100 now. So we've obviously broken out of this kind of choppy sideways range that we were in for a while. And again, we, we closed nicely above it, so it wasn't like these breaks here where we, we dipped below it, but then viciously moved above and on two occasions, um, didn't, you know, pull massively off the lows. Same thing here. So a lot of buying interest 
at these lows and eventually it's taken us into territory above that old range resistance. So the first area of resistance I would have been looking at is just from uh, you know, from this low on March 29th, but we're pretty much at that at the moment. That's what we're pausing at. It's around the 6700 mark. And then beyond here, I think it's this was kind of the kind of uptrend we were attempting after the, the general election that took us into new highs and we, we took out this low here, you know, dripped right down, tried to get above it again, failed, failed again and eventually rolled over massively in August of last year. So that to me would be another big one, which again is it's it's kind of just at the the, the one hundred round number. So this is about six eight oh nine, but really that six eight hundred is a is the key next one that, that the index needs to get through. And then these this resistance that it constantly bumped up against in 2013 and 2014 would be another layer. Because if you pull out to the even longer term monthly chart, if we were to bump right into that and roll over, you know, that would be something akin to a heavy shoulders formation. A very rough neckline, which you know, it's um it would be it it would be very difficult to trade the the breakout of the neckline, but if we did get a failure here. Um, it could prompt some pretty vicious selling down to 6,000. But um, the gains are pretty broad based. Um, still looking a bit weaker in in, um, in Europe. We've got the ECB this week, obviously. Um, the, the expectation is that because they only just started their new, uh, they they announced the new program of measures in March and they only really enacted them in, in June. They haven't had enough time to see them taking effect in the real economy. And a lot of people are suggesting that really they, they um, half the reason that they have agreed to start buying corporate bonds is that uh, they're running out of government bonds to buy, especially bonds that they're eligible to buy because they, uh, they, they can only buy down to um, negative yields that match their uh, yeah, their deposit rate that they've set. So anything yielding under 0.25 percent, they're not able to buy. So that's uh, that's a large part of the German bond market at the moment. At some point, German bonds were uh, negative out to 15 years. In Switzerland, they're negative out to 50 years, five zero. Um, so. That, that that's pulled back a bit in recent days, but nonetheless, um, the ECB is kind of running out of things to buy. Nonetheless, we don't expect anything at this meeting. Probably all this meeting is going to be, uh, the most interesting bit, I would say, is probably just going to be Draghi's comments on, on Brexit. And it would come out of left field a bit if the ECB uh, started talking about taking extra measures to defend Europe against Brexit. Uh, especially since the Bank of England just held held firm at their recent meeting. That would be a bit of a surprise, and that would probably send the euro pretty sharply lower, and this particular chart probably a fair bit higher on, on the idea of new stimulus. I think part of the reason that we've kind of gone so sideways in European markets and uh, haven't seen the kind of breakout that we've seen in the, the US and the UK is the fact that not much more stimulus is on the table and growth is still a bit poor in Europe. But we're at the 200-day moving average. Um, if we can close above here, the next line of resistance will be this fairly well-defined downtrend line above there, and you know that that definitely opens up this um, pretty much the 10.500 is the next resistance, and beyond there, then we are into breakout territory. So um, it'll be a matter of whether the uh, the Germany 30, the, the German DAX, can catch up with with U.S. stocks. And I think if the breakout in U.S. stocks is sustained. Then you know, just be a matter of time before before these markets catch up. Let's uh, let's switch gear to, to commodities. We're seeing a bit of a downturn in the crude, but uh, the market's been pretty pretty choppy of late. We're just in this kind of grinding uh, correction phase in crude. We're we're out of this really bullish channel phase that we were in. Um, we've got the uh, the, the lower high here came back down to the trend line, attempted another break higher, couldn't do it, another lower high. And then we've actually made a lower low here, which has taken us into a sort of short term downtrend. 
we, we didn't get much. Um, you know, this this it was uh, a pretty pretty weak breakdown here. So it will be a matter of whether we can add some. You know, whether this uh, this new low that's been taken at forty five seventy odd, whether that can be taken out would really get people worried. I think, uh, but at the moment it looks like we're just in this kind of very choppyish correction. Something that's uh, fairly bullish of note is if you do consider this a bit of a false breakout, you know, you'll also see that there's been pretty much no new low made in RSI, so a, a bit of a um, bullish divergence in RSI to suggest that actually maybe we get another push up to that declining trend line uh, and maybe even a break above it. Next one, gold. Um, gold had a bit of a, a rough week last week, a bit of a game changer I would actually add. This is the weekly chart for gold. I've just got it on here, it's uh, super simplistic in terms of lines and, and, and averages involved. Um, just because we formed this, this bearish engulfing candlestick on the weekly candlestick in, in gold, and that's right from the third test of the 70 overbought level on the weekly chart. So pretty, uh, pretty damning outlook for gold based on this particular pattern. Um, you know, this is it's a longer term pattern, so it, it doesn't mean that we get an immediate sell off. We could get a pushback into that pattern, uh, back up to 1350 perhaps is the round number in that pattern. Uh, but nonetheless, that that's pretty bearish. Um, we're, we're above the 200 week MA, we're, we're uptrending, we're making high highs and higher lows, but um, this could be the first signs of a, of a trend reversal. If we have a look down at the daily chart, you can see here that here it looks a bit more modest, um, just another pullback, and so still for that reason we could get a few people buying into it, but I, th I think it's going to struggle now to, to get to 1375. Of course these bearish patterns fail all the time, um, but um, I would not be, uh, I think the, the risk of that pattern coming, you know, um, bringing about bigger declines would be a reason that I'd be uh, pretty cautious about buying the dip uh, and probably not looking to take it out, um, take it right profits out into into one four hundred. So I think we'll um, I think we've covered most of the bases there. Um, again, a lot of uh, U.S. earnings this week. Um, well, I've mentioned that uh, there's some of the big tech stocks, so uh, Netflix, um, Amazon, Yahoo, Microsoft, also some of the banks haven't reported yet, Bank of America probably reporting any time soon, also got Goldman, Morgan Stanley, American Express, and um, and then just the, the ECB meeting on Thursday, and also this UK data, which could be the key driver for, for whether sterling's bottomed or not. So make sure to watch out for all of that. Good luck with trading this week. Uh, it's Jasper signing out.